Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming to my talk today. Today I'll be speaking a little bit about ADSB security and a personal project I've worked on on the intersection of aviation and signals intelligence called Flycatcher. So a quick overview of the device I created. It's called Flycatcher, and it's made for effective ADSB monitoring and detecting for an inst instances of aircraft spoofing. It's low cost and reliable. It's created using the Raspberry Pi, and it's compatible with multiple software-defined radio signal sources. And I created my own convolutional neural network that parses ADSB inputs in order to detect for reliable and unreliable aircraft signals. A little bit about my background. I'm still upstarting in my cybersecurity field, but I've been a software developer for about a decade, and I've been focusing on aerospace security for the past few years with an emphasis on aviation due to my piloting experience. And a little bit of recap on what ADSB is. It stands for Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, and it's a mandated technology for performing surveillance and signals intelligence on airplanes. And if we break the acronym down, it's automatic, meaning it doesn't require any manual input from the pilot itself. It's dependent, meaning that it requires GPS signals from satellites in order to transmit the aircraft's information and positioning. It's meant for surveillance, so it, it contains complete comprehensive information about the data of the aircraft transmitted itself, such as its airspeed, positioning, altitude, and so forth. And lastly, it continuously beacons out and broadcasts data, allowing for ground-based ATC or other pilots to receive that information and in order to triangulate where, where the aircraft is positioned in the sky. So here's a imagery conceptual overview of how ADSB works. All ADSB signals are derived from the Global Navigational Satellite System, which provides positioning aircraft, positioning information to the aircraft itself, which is then beaconed out via the emanated ADSB out hardware components internally on the airplane. And once that information is beaconed out via packets on the 1090 megahertz protocol, it can be received by other airplanes alongside ground-based receivers and antennas alongside air traffic control in order for those receivers to figure out where the airplane is positioned. So this technology works using three core components that allow for ADSB to be broadcasted on airplanes. There's the GPS receiver that receives the positioning information from the satellites themselves. And then it's the ADSB packets are transmitted via the transponder on the plane, which is required on all planes. And it typically uses the mode S protocol in order to send comprehensive data about the plane itself. And internally on the plane, it has an ADSB in allowing for continuous monitoring by the pilots themselves of other air traffic in the vicinity. Although ADSB is relied on by a wide range of airplanes and pilots worldwide, it has some core vulnerabilities. It is unauthenticated and unencrypted. Unauthenticated meaning that there is no verification of the transmission, so any ground-based hacker can transmit ADSB packets and it'll automatically be received as a packet. There's no amount of verification alongside its unencrypted, unencrypted nature, making it transparent to anyone um, who tunes into that frequency. This, really, this reveals a lot of attack vectors, especially on the commu communications end. The four core ones are jamming, spoofing, replay attacks, and message inject injection. Jamming is when a ground-based transmitter can flood the ADSB frequency with a bunch of garbleless data. There's also spoofing, where it's more of a selective-based jamming attack, where you can custom fabricate data packets and then transmit it. This can effectively create something called a ghost plane, where a ghost airplane would show up and pop up on the ADSB feed that isn't really a plane itself. There's replay attacks where you capture ADSB packets from an earlier time and then replay it. So you're effectively creating a duplicate airplane that is then transmitted and then received. And then there's also message injection, where you play around with the ADSB packets individually themselves in order to mess with specific telemetry like the altitude, airspace, um, airspeed, positioning, and so forth. 
The one I chose to focus on for this project is spoofing because I enjoyed its customized nature. A lot of spoofing um, can be detected using artificial intelligence and I wanted to pursue that kind of modality for detecting spoofed airplanes for this project. So how spoofing on ADSB works is that a, a ground-based hacker can transmit ghost air, aircraft into the sky by creating custom fabricated packets that mimic the ADSB protocol. And these spoofed airplanes can be tracked by other airplanes in the sky alongside ground-based receivers. So I went through a four-step build process as I was constructing this device. Firstly, I set up a ADSB reception ground station using four, co four components that I'll be outlining later. I went about constructing a device so it was portable and I could stow it on the back of an airplane. Then I went about training a deep neural network um, in order to detect for instances of aircraft spoofing. And then lastly, I stowed the device itself on the back of a sport cruiser and flew it around the South Bay in order to get access to data in order to train the artificial intelligence machine learning model that I created. So one thing I wanted to mention is there's a wide range of credible data sources in order to get access to ADSB data that you can actually access right now. There's ADSB Exchange, FlightAware, ADSB Hub. For this project, I wanted to go about manually getting these transmitted signals. So I set up my own ADSB reception ground station. This consisted of a FlightAware Pro Stick Plus SDR as my software-defined radio option in order to get specialized ADSB signals, which relies on the RTL2832U chipset, which is really configurable with a lot of dumb 1090 decoders. I used a 1090 megahertz rubber ducky antenna for a cheap and reliable setup, the Raspberry Pi in order to analyze the ADSB packets, alongside the flight-aware GUI display in order to have a visual output of the ADSB display data I was getting. So once you're able to receive the ADSB signals that are propagated on the 1090 megahertz frequency, you need to go about decoding these signals. And the signals I chose to decode were the ones transmitted on the mode S. There's different modes of ADSB. There's A, C, and S. S is the most comprehensive of all the modes and contains advanced mode with comprehensive data about the aircraft itself. And on the bottom is a message structure breakdown of ADSB packets. You can see it starts with the first few bits um, outlining the downlink format. There is the transponder capability, the iCal designation, which all aircraft has its own iCal identifier to identify it, alongside its message taking up the 33 to 88 bit sequence, alongside with a parity ID appended to the end of it. So the way I integrated TUM 1090 was I embedded it directly on the Raspberry Pi itself. And as soon as the 1090 megahertz ADSB antenna was able to retrieve the signals, it fed it through the ten, DUM 1090 decoder software protocol, which you can download and install directly onto the Pi. And then it creates a JSON output, which you could parse and visualize on a wide range of GUI sources. I also wanted to add some sort of plotting and visualization for both my gr ground station and the device itself. So once the JSON output was tabulated by the DUM 1090 decoder, I fed it into the FlightAware visualization dashboard in order to see the live ADSB broadcasts. Once I was able to get a sufficient ground station running, and it was able to pick up some sort of signals, I, I wanted to convert it into a device so it could make it portable and have it be stowed on the back of an airplane to, in order to get access to more comprehensive data in a wide range of locations. Here's a build outline of materials that I used. I used the Raspberry Pi 3B, a custom case enclosure, alongside a TFT display case on top, alongside my 1090 megahertz rubber ducky antenna. The final build looks something like that. It was good because it had a um, battery case attached to the bottom of it, making it so I could use it wherever I wanted to. It was highly portable. It didn't take up that much space. 
and it was a durable design. So once the device was constructed, I went about architecting the algorithm that was supposed to be classifying for spoofed airplanes. And there's a wide range of indicators of spoofed aircraft. And here's a graph of the altitude and speed graph of a typical and genuine aircraft. You can see that it's it outlines the main phases of flight itself. So you can see in the beginning, it will have like a ascension as the airspeed goes up and the altitude goes up as the airplane is taking off. You can see the cruise, cruising uh, indication near the middle of the flight. And then finally, you see a decrease of all the values as the airplane is landing. You can check for spoofed airplanes by checking for inconsistencies of telemetry values such as positioning if it has weird GPS coordinates that don't outline its phase of flight or its location or it just abruptly pops up in different locations that's an indication there's also altitude if there's a lot of variance in the altitude being displayed on some of the ADSB plotline charts also identification spoofed airplanes are not really identified identified so within the ADSB message structure itself you'll see like a null or you won't see a lot of values for any of the out identification fields in the data packet. So once I was able to get the feature vectors derived from the ADSB inputs I went about creating a dense neural network in order to classify for these spoofed signals. And a dense neural network overlays a, con a neural network itself, which is a artificial intelligence model that's derived from the human brain, and it consists of multiple interconnected layers. And in a dense one, you'll see all the layers connected together. And as each neuron processes the input from the feature vectors, it applies some weight and bias to it, and then it passes the result through an activation function in order to make an accurate guess of whether an airplane is spoofed and running it through a binary classifier. So I went about creating the, the DNN by custom coding a Python script that utilized the TensorFlow library in order to accurately detect for the spoofed airplane. And I used the ReLU activation functions at each of the three layers consisting of the DNN. And those were three densely connected interconnected nodes. And the final layer contained a sigmoid function in order to make a binary classification, zero indicating that the airplane was not spoofed and one being that the air airplane was spoofed. As for the training data I used for the model, I used historical ADSB records from a wide range of ADSB data sources. ADSB Exchange had um, ADSB data sets going back to the 2000s that I was able to leverage. FlightAware being another great source, and OpenSky. And I was able to download archives of their ADSB data from CSV records they had had in the past. And I was able to get data from my own ground station alongside the device itself. What I did was I would take all those signals and once it passed through the dump 1090 decoder, I saved all the data into a CSV record for it to be put into the model. As for the testing the device itself, I really wanted to get a wide range of data from a lot of locations. And although it could have traveled to different locations via car or anything in order to get the data, I wanted to go, go full on with this project. So I put the device on the back of a sport cruiser, which is a single engine airplane, and I flew it around a lot of different areas within the South Bay area in Los Angeles. And you can see that's a picture of me loading it on the on the sport cruiser and me flying the plane to all those different locations. And as for the data collection process, um, the, the device just sat on the back of the airplane and it was continuously monitoring the ADSB signals around me using the 1090 megahertz antenna. And it was just keeping a file in the Raspberry Pi itself, which contained ADSB records of all the airplanes nearby. As for the scan locations in this project, I went pretty much 
all the South, Los South Bay, Los Angeles area, Santa Monica, Torrance, Malibu, Palisades, Burbank, and downtown Los Angeles. I made sure to go through pretty popular airspaces. Um, LAX was really popular. Burbank was also popular. It, and I also went for, to local air airports like Santa Monica airports, um, Van Nuys, in order to get a wide range of data because especially at commercial airports, you'll get like 747s, but you won't get single engine airplanes. While if I went to um, a more local airport, I would get a, a bigger range or a bigger breadth of data because that's where you get like multi-engines, um, helicopters, single engine airplanes. So I wanted to have data that reflected both general aviation and commercial aviation as well. Once I was able to collect and tabulate this data in a CSV format, I fed it into the deep neural network model I created using TensorFlow. And then in order to get a visual plot of the, the classification once the spoofed aircraft was classified, I used a library called Folium in order to make a visual plot of the spoofed airplanes. Build improvements going forward. One is using more proper signals intelligence techniques. This was a pretty straightforward scan of it. So it wasn't really analyzing the signals themselves. It was analyzing the data contained within the signals. But another approach of detecting for ADS-B spoofing is looking through the first phase of the retrieval process where you analyze the signals themselves. And one modality of doing this is a technique called RSSI fingerprinting, um, RSSI indicating the signal strength of the aircraft, um, ADS-B out transmission. So each, as each airplane transmits the ADS-B message using its ADS-B out, it ha will have its own unique RSSI identifier. And this could be a more proper technique of analyzing each of the individual RF characteristics of the signals themselves, and you can locally localize the signals where they come out of in order to identify the airplanes. And typically when you're doing RSSI fingerprinting for a spoofed plane, you get more deviations and deflections of the RSSI signal, while for a valid plane, you'll have more of a consistent output. So that would be a signals intelligence way of improving this build. And secondly, is to use more refined algorithms. I use the DNN for this approach, but there's a lot of exploration with other models that could be done. So using other deep learning models like recurrent neural networks or uh, long short-term memory networks could be sufficient alongside adding reinforcement techniques in order to improve the accuracy of the co current convolutional network. Um, the tests I ran with this convolutional network reflected accuracy rates of 90%, but that could be improved using these approach. Additional enhancements would be the, the training data itself. One huge constraint with this project was the training data because a lot of the training data for the spoofed data set, so there was a valid data set and there was a spoofed data set. The valid data set was very easy to get because there's a huge tabulated records of ADSB messages that are from a wide range of sources. But when you're dealing with spoof sources, I can only get it from very specialized people within the aviation signals intelligence techniques. And you're also dealing with a legality issue in that regard because it's really hard to get access to spoofed data you can train a model on. So I would say for half the uh, spoof signals, Half of them had to be generated myself, so I had to go into the perspective of a person who would be spoofing these signals in order to manually generate ADSB messages that would be spoofed in nature in order to train this model. However, having more realistic data in order to train this data set would make this more this uh, neural network model more accurate. And one way for increasing the accuracy rate of another way of doing it would also be using a technique called data augmentation, which would further refine the approach of manually generating these spoof signal messages that I could directly feed into the neural network itself, allowing me to have a more comprehensive data array of spoof signals that I could train this model on. 
thank you. That's about it. If you have any questions, feel free to come up or ask them right now. Um, that's my contact information, but thank you so much for coming today.